Hi, so I'm going to make a UV cure lamp. Now the reason I'm going to make a UV cure lamp is I'm busy turning this stuff into an average everyday flexo printing ink. This stuff is a conductive ink that I'm really quite proud of and has great conductivity. But there's a problem with it in that if I want to get it uh, used by the mainstream, I have to put it into a form, an ink, that everybody's used to. There's a good reason for that. Flexo and printing presses cost millions. They're, they're huge beasts. They're very expensive. They're central to a guy's business. There's no way he wants to put something on there that might bugger up his press. Because if you bugger up a press, you're buggering up millions of pounds worth of equipment. So that introduces a degree of um, conservativeness with small c into a um, printer's approach to new inks. And <laughs> you can understand it. So what I've done is taken this stuff. Now what this is, is a Seagworks um, printing base. It's transparent white. So the only thing that's in there is all of the printing base, less the colour. And what I'm going to do is put the conductive components in there instead of the colour and make this into a conductive ink. The beauty of this thing is that it will go on anybody's printing press anywhere in the world and it's a top of the line piece of kit. So it's a very nice ink, or it will be a very nice ink. Now, I'm having uh, quite a degree of success with that and getting good conductivities out of it, but it has introduced a problem. It's a UV cure. I need ultraviolet light to cure it, and I don't have a new ultraviolet light curing box, so I need to make one. Now, a UV cure box has lots of uses. If you're working in silkscreen printing, for instance, it's very handy to have a UV cure box. Uh, if you're using uh, photo curable polymers for any reason, like making your own stamps, it's very useful for that. So a UV cure box is an enormously useful thing to have. Unfortunately, in order to buy one, it's also enormously expensive. And that can be a problem. So, <coughs> I took a trip down to my local do-it-yourself store and picked up four of these things. These things are just your everyday, ordinary, fluorescent light fittings. And they were, in fact, on sale, so they were £2.50 each. So I spent £10 on four of them. And this is what they look like. Now if I take the lamp out, that lamp is uh, your everyday lamp that we can replace with a fluorescent tube. Because it's the same unit takes a normal, normal everyday fluorescent tube or a UV fluorescent tube. Now these units are defined by two things. There's something called the T5 and something called the G5. The G5 is actually the size of this. A G5 is where these pins are 5 millimetres apart and the diameter is 16 millimetres. And that defines the socket that it fits in. So if you get a G5 fitting, you need a G5 lamp for it. Now if you take these things apart, then that's what they look like inside. This is called the ballast. Now, um, fluorescent lamps are negative resistant lamps. That means that when they are turned on, they have an enormous resistance, but when they get going, when they strike the arc, the resistance drops to zero, which means a huge amount of ampage would be uh, pulled through there, and of course you can't have that, so what you do is stick an electronic ballast in there that stops that happening when the lamp is actually going. And the ballast is rated at T5, so the T5 rates it for a um, G5 8 watt lamp, which is what this is. So when you're looking for your um, unit, or you're looking for your UV lamp to replace a new unit, you need to know the ballast type, which is T5, the fitting type, which is G5, and then finally, the length between the two. And in this case, it is at 300 millimeters. So if you can find a T5, G5, 300 millimeter fluorescent lamp, you can literally take this out and replace it with a UV light. Now the reason you can do that is <laughs> UV lamps and these lamps are the same thing. When this gets going, what it does is hits the white bit that you can see on the outside, which is a phosphorus. And the energy that's hitting that white bit is UV. These things generate ultraviolet all by themselves. They cut the inside of the phosphorus that converts the ultraviolet into ordinary visible light that we can see and reduces the ultraviolet light coming out of there to zero. What we want is to get rid of that phosphorus and they sell those lamps in exactly that size. If you have a look on the internet, you'll find loads of lamps for any kind of fluorescent light fitting you could possibly imagine. You just need to know what those um, parameters are. So you need to know the ballast type, the fitting size type, the wattage rating and the length of your bulb. As long as you um, know those things, then you can find a lamp replacement relatively easily. And it's not too difficult to find those things either. If you look on the box, 
it will tell you all that you need to know. The box will tell you the fitting type, the lamp size, the uh, wattage drawer of it, and the ballast type. If it doesn't tell you the ballast type, you take the lid off and you can read the ballast type on the ballast, which will also give you that information. So all of that information is really, really easy to get. Now, once you've got that information, you can then just go on the net, buy some of these. These are surprisingly cheap. I thought they'd be hugely expensive. Actually, for this type of bulb, it's £2.48 per bulb. So, I've paid £20 for my electronics equipment to make this UV cure box. And remember, these UV cure boxes are hundreds of pounds. It's crazy. But I've paid £20 for all of that kit. Now, the only thing I now need to do, of course, is put it into some kind of housing. Uh, now, the housing I'm going to use, and I've mentioned it many times before, is this stuff. This stuff is um, Builder's Board, or UPVC Soffit and Fascia. And um, it comes in a variety of widths and sizes. It's um, PVC on the outside with polyurethane on the inside. And the joy of it is it cuts really easy with a, cut, a trimming knife, saws really easy, sands really easily, glues together with cyanoacrylic glue, this stuff, and the glue joint is actually stronger than the board itself. So if you want to break the glue joint, then you have to break the board not do it. So fantastic stuff. I use it quite a lot and I'm going to use it to build the housing for my UV cure box. So the next thing I need to do is obviously make a box. So here are the four lights all screwed onto a bit of MDF backboard. Now I've routed a channel in there so that I can put the wires through because these things come with little rubber grommets and they're wired in series. So this one goes to this one goes to this one goes to this one goes to this grey wire and this grey wire will be what plugs straight into the mains. Now this grey wire is lighting wire, it's one millimetre twin core on earth. You can buy it from an electrician's store or you can buy it from a DIY store. And as I say, it just loops in and out. Now it's dead easy, these things are, are marked uh, live, earth, neutral. You've got an L and an N. In England, the neutral is always blue, so it's blue to blue. It, live is always brown, so it's brown to brown. And the earth is always this colour. In the US, I think the hot wire is white. Um, but you just put colour to colour, basically, when you wire them up. So screw them down to your board, wrap around the channel, and then wire them up all in series, and you're ready for the next step. So there's the basic box finished, and I've made the sides out of the builder's board, and there's the MDF top. Now I'm a bit anal about this stuff, so I put some screws in. I don't think you strictly need to bother. I think the glue will hold it, but like I say, I like a bit of belt and braces to hold up my trousers. My plan is to have it like that when I turn it on, so that the UV isn't actually coming out. But you could equally, have it that way up if you wanted. What you'd need to do is get yourself a piece of glass that would fit the outside of that box and then a cover on that piece of glass. So you put your piece onto the glass, put your cover on and turn it on. Now, you can see now it's all finished wired up and it's no more complicated than wiring a plug. So if you can wire a plug, you can make this thing. To be honest, if you can't wire a plug, then you probably shouldn't be bothering with it. But if you can wire a plug, then that's all there is to it because the system is really just colour to colour. There's one other thing to note, that on those wires you can see those white plastic blocks. Those blocks are clamps. They are in fact uh, these things. They sell them to make kitchen cupboards and they're just big enough to act as clamps. You screw those down to clamp on the cable because some idiot is bound to go like that. And you don't have clamps on them then they'll pull the wire out. You put clamps on them, they're pulling against the clamp and not the wire. And the only other thing I've done is put a light switch on there so that the live goes into the light switch and out of the light switch into the lights. So we've got a way of turning it off and on uh, when we've plugged it in. And that is your basic box done. So the only thing we need to do now really is um, put the lamps in there. However, it would be made slightly better if we put a reflective coating on here. So we put something reflective like say aluminium, then any light that's going behind those lamps will actually be reflected back onto the surface and you give you a better box. So an option would be to put a reflective surface on there before you put the lamps in, and then put the lamps in. So here's the lamp all finished, and as you can see I put the reflectors in place, these are just actually aluminium foil, and most of the lamps in place, and this is the lamp. Now it's a direct replacement for the lamp that we took out of there, apart from the fact that these are ultraviolet. Now, as I say, when ordering these things, what you need to know is the fitting size. This one's G, um, yes, G5, but they come a whole range of fitting sizes. You need to know the uh, transformer, which is T5 in here, the length, which is 30 uh, centimetres for this, 
the wattage rating, which is 8 watts. Once you've got those right, they go, go straight into the fitting that you bought from your um, do-yourself store because the fitting matches the lamp. And you just go onto the website and it'll tell you which ones that you actually want and there's a whole range of them, they're very easy to buy. But you should be aware that there are three kinds of UV. Now UV covers a whole range of wavelengths, but the lamps on the whole produce a set of wavelengths uh, and they divide them up into UV, A, B and C. UVC is what you use for germicidal applications, so you'll see used in hospitals and things like pond filtering systems. UVA is actually the one that we want, which is what this one is, it's a UVA lamp. And UVA and B is what you get in suntan lamps and for looking after lizards. And all you do is literally put it back in where you took the original bulb out of. So put it in and give it a twirl so it closes off. And then it's ready to start up. Now, this will, without a doubt, be nowhere near as powerful as an industrial thing. It's uh, 8, 8, 16, 32 watts of UV light there. We're bouncing some back. So it, it will cure it, but it won't cure it as quickly as a, an industrial machine. So instead of taking a few seconds to cure something, it's maybe going to take about five minutes or so. But to be honest, on one-off things, five minutes uh, in your lab is not really a great heartache. I mean, you just flick it on, then they light up nicely as a UV lamp. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you and thank you very much for watching.